What makes up an economy? Is it supply and demand? Could it be the production versus the consumption? Or is it as simple as goods and services? The truth is everything makes up an economy. From million dollar corporations to you and your family. If you look around when you're out and about, you'll see the important industries that drive what your economy is. For us, when we drive around our town, we see corn and fields and farms. While they may not look as enticing as a five-star casino or restaurant, they hold just as much value. Ohio is made up of roughly 50% prime farmland, most of which is considered the most fertile and productive in the country, employing one in eight Ohioans. 96% of Ohio farms are family owned, and in most cases, they are closer than you think. I'm going to introduce you to the local heroes who help fuel our economy and bring fun and life right to our doorsteps. I'm Dan Young, the chief ice cream dipper here at Young Jersey Dairy. I'm one of about a dozen family members, young family members that work here, doing various things from milking the cows to making ice cream to serving ice cream to picking up golf balls, all that sort of stuff. Young Jersey Dairy mission statement, the first six words of which are on our front sign, which defines what we are, is we create fun for our customers. We're a destination place in the agritourism business, and folks come here because of what we do here. We serve in a lot of ice cream, a lot of cheese and food, but we also have fun things to do, like visit the goats, uh, play utters and putters miniature golf, or our driving range, or a batting cage, or a kitty corral, or a slide, and in the fall, we have corn maze, picker on pumpkins. Uh, we have a haunted wagon ride that goes on some evenings there in uh, October. Agritourism is very important to me and to Young's because that's kind of what we are. But we like to tell the story of what agriculture is and what part of that plays into their lives, what they eat, uh, how it works. We're excited here at Young's about opening up our new dairy store sometime this late summer or early fall. It's gonna be a very cool building. It's gonna be double the size of the one we've had since 1968. Uh, we're gonna move our ice cream production and cheese production to it, so our guests will be able to watch that happening while they're eating their ice cream and cheese. I think that'll be really fun. My name is John Brinstrader. I'm the owner of Brinstrader Farm. It's been in my family since 1821, so we're celebrating our 200th year. Here at Brentstreeter Farm, we grow a variety of crops, and we get started in the spring with, with corn, and we, we raise commodity corn, but we also raise these heritage corns that, that were grown here back in the 1800s, like lemmings and Ohio blue claridge. The pumpkin harvest and squash harvest starts in September and continues through October. The, the grains then are harvested uh, as, as they become mature. We plant the winter wheat then in, in October because it, it overwinters and, and, and we, we really like keeping the soil covered 300 days, 365 days out of the year. What I, I love about farming, and it's hard, hard to pick one thing because it changes throughout the year. Like this time of year, I love going out and scouting the crops and looking for beneficial and, and not so beneficial insects. I like to see how the, the, everything's growing. I'll take a, a shovel out and I'll dig up roots and see how the soil is and, and how the earthworms are doing and, and the, the condition of the roots. So that, that I'm, I'm really a, a, a biologist and an entomologist. You have to wear a lot of hats as a farmer. But then in spring, it's like everything's coming to life and, and we've, we've got a, a big list of things to plant. And then in, in November, when, when things calm down, I can fix things up and, and um, kind of improve the situation and then plan for the next year. I think to be a good farmer, you really have to be good at observing and, and there's, there's like learning at the university, but then there's nature school. And, and we, we make our plan and mother nature laughs and then she makes hers and then, then we get to figure out what's going on. 
what I really love is just trying to figure out how to leave this place better than I found it. And, and that takes a lot of resources and, and, and a lot of uh, sweat equity and, and the help of a great community here. But it's well worth it. Jennifer Clark um, of Sunshine Acres Lavender Farm in Morrow, Ohio, and we have two children, Grace and Evan Clark as well. Uh, we have been growing lavender about six years? Six years, yeah. Jeff and I and our family moved out here about seven years ago, and we decided to grow some lavender in the extra space in a back field, and the lavender came from there, and the business has been growing, and we've been adding to it each year. Keeping it alive, that's the hardest thing for us. <laughs> we were socked with two really rough winters when the plants were very young. It was such a harsh winter that our pond froze over. And that was the year we lost 300 lavender plants, but they were baby plants. And so they just didn't quite have their roots in. Um, I think we're, we've got good roots now. Yeah. Yeah. Metaphorically more and literally. <laughs> well, the plants are more established. They can handle snow laying on them. And you know, a little more insulation now. For me, by far, the favorite part is, you know, we get so busy during the events because we're checking people in, we're parking cars, but every once in a while, uh, we get the opportunity to just walk out in the field and talk with people. And, um, you know, what we've been able to create on our property is, is to us, our yard, but to them it's an experience that they don't necessarily normally get to have. And so my favorite part is just always to hear about their experience from their perspective. Um, lavender is our core product. Obviously the flower is what people come out here for. The experience of going out on the field, cutting their own flowers. Um, and so some of the products that we offer came from other people's recommendations. Requests. And requests. <laughs> um, it all started with the culinary though. That it all started with the butter. So the whipped lavender honey butter was the inaugural food item. Um, but other items that we have, um, next came the lavender simple syrup. Then my husband is great at networking and talking to people at what they do well. So he found um, a gentleman who does coffee. He, I talked to a friend who does uh, goat milk soap and, and we brought in new products um, with people that specialize in other things. The jam and jelly lady in downtown Lebanon. So we have a lavender strawberry jam that she does for us. Let's see, some of the other food items. I, I make desserts with lavender for our VIP night when we do a fundraiser for cancer-free kids. It has adult beverages with lavender and desserts with lavender, and then people wanted the desserts. And so my sweet, encouraging husband, so why don't you make cookie kits of the things that I sell and so people can take it home and make their own um, lavender chocolate chip cookies. In effort to teach our kids, you know, just business skills and people skills, uh, we thought, you know what, let's do a lavender lemonade stand. We call it You Pick the Price. Since it's You Pick Lavender, it's You Pick the Price. And it is crazy what people will put in their little money box <laughs> uh, and they get to keep all the money. And from that, we teach them, you know, how to pay for your expenses, you know, cups and sugar and all that. And, we, and then they get to save money, um, they get to tithe and send money to our Compassion Kids. Um, so they've learned how to save and spend and give. And give. She's getting some bartending skills at That's right. the ripe age of eight. That's right. One of the most loved experiences <laughs> on the farm is the lavender lemonade. Oh. We are Sunshine Acres Lavender Farm in Morrow, Ohio. We're only open just a few weeks out of the year at the end of June and the first part of July on our private family property. Um, and so you can find us online. The best way to keep up with our events is on Facebook. We're also on Instagram and sunshineacresfarm.com is our website. So we hope to see you. Come yeah, visit our love. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Jeff Probst with Blooms and Berries Farm Market. I run the business with my wife Emily and my mom Kathy. The farm's been in the family since 1939 and we've been running agritourism since 1999. Why it's important for us to be, to embrace agritourism is that with the traditional corn and soybean kind of row crop model there's no way in the world that we could sustain our farm with just with the way that model has been built over the years I would say so when it takes such large infrastructure such ex extreme expensive combines and tractors to run to run corn and soybeans you would never be able to pay that off on a 61 acre scale 
But when we can embrace what we can do in these specialty crops like strawberries or blackberries or elderberries or blueberries and be able to bring our guests in and have this immersive, hands-on, authentic farm experience, that's what's really important. And I think it's one of the most important things like when we talk about um, pricing and how do you value a trip to the farm and sustainability and being financially sustainable as a farm. If, if you're not thinking about the next generation and are, is there going to be enough there to pay a salary to keep your kids around, your farm's going to go away and it's going to turn into houses. And so, um, and that's just kind of the truth of the matter. And so to be able to go into agritourism and to have have all these agritourism farms think about how to price and how to model and how to make sure that they're getting compensated fairly for a, a guest visit to the farm is the only way that we're going to keep these farms farms because farms around here grow great houses and uh, we want them to grow great strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, elderberries, pumpkins, sunflowers, right. all the things that we do and then all the other amazing farms that we have in the area. So our role at Blooms and Berries Farm Market is to really give an authentic on-farm experience to our guests when they come here. So they're going to get to pick strawberries or pick blueberries, pick berries, whatever might be in season at the time. We also have a garden center, as our name suggests, Blooms and Berries Farm Market. We have a beautiful market barn. Um, and so the things we specialize in is, is just making sure that people have a really memorable, authentic, hands-on experience that you just really can't find anywhere else unless you're on a farm actually out there in nature, in the elements doing it. Fall on the farm is one of our biggest spends of the year. It runs six or seven weekends, depending on the year. And then of course, we're growing a lot of strawberries. So we do our strawberry days in May and June, um, and we're growing about eight acres of strawberries, primarily you pick. Um, and so guests can come out and pick, and, and we run the animals, and we have the Barnyard 500 trike track, and we have all of the things, the bounce pads. And so we always just try to really make it um, a great experience and really memorable, and mostly, it's about family time. A lot of our customers are families. And so bringing the young kids out and getting them out and hands on and understanding. Everybody talks about knowing where your food comes from. But I think it's more than that. I think it's actually like going out and seeing the process and maybe you're making something with it when you get home. And it's just a really great, it's a great way to have a childhood.